Gianna, welcome to Discovery of Self. And I'm laughing because I thought I made a great introduction <laughs> to our guest today, Spirit of Lima and everything, and it wasn't recording. So, wow. Okay, so that wasn't meant to be. So, one more chance. So, I'm Yana for Discovery of Self, where we're all about discovering our greatest version of ourselves. And we always like to have folks like our guest, Spirit of Lima, here to talk about her journey and her process. And she was telling a beautiful story before I had to cut her off. But go ahead, beloved. We are on. Yay! Well, thanks to <laughs> beloved sister for um, providing the invite and um, allowing us the space to share our stories so we all can see how in sync some of us are with our evolution. And um, I was just saying, I became online. I got online with this self-discovery when my father was uh, diagnosed and was um, transitioning. He had pancreatic cancer. And so on this journey, it led me to, you know, um, different healers and research and, and data that was supporting me understanding about the body and the mind and the mind-body connection and um so that's where it all began for me, really understanding. I remember hearing um, one of the doctor, Eve uh, Capelli, or Capanelli, I think she was British, that my father went to eventually before he passed, and she gave me a book, and she was like saying, well, you know, the mind is very powerful. <laughs> you know, don't think thoughts that can affect your body. I'm thinking, wow, wait, wait, how can thoughts affect the body, right? <laughs> so it took me some time to digest that because it was totally foreign for me. Um, and I was in my 20s at the time, so I had no clue about any of this mind-body connection. But that was my conscious journey to dig a little deeper. And um, out of that came the Cosmic Womb, my internet radio talk show that I dedicated to uh, particularly women, but not exclusively, where we kind of delved into the metaphysics and um, spirituality and healing and sisterhood and all those great lovey, dovey things that make us feel really good when we, we, when we know more about ourselves. So that was my journey from the Cosmic Womb. Um, that ended, I, um, ended a marriage, I completed a cycle of whatever that part of my life was about, entered to a new cycle where I delved more into sacred sexuality. Mm. Um, and that became a very delicious journey for me and really delving a little bit deeper, another dimension of my healing. Um, and from that journey, that's where I sit with you now, I'm still in the process, still a student, will forever be a student, um, and sacred sexuality, because that is our life force. It is how we're here and how we continue to be here through this sacred energy that we call chi, our spirit. So um, that's really like a little <laughs> short uh, yeah. version of Spirit Halima. And um, this, new, this new expression of my work would be Central Charm, where I'm learning about the um, senses and the multi-sensory abilities of of beings and how we're actually evolving, expanding, stretching beyond limitations to something that the mind um, has imagined, um, but maybe not typically, you know, showcased in our, you know, in, in the media, in our surroundings per se. But the mind can achieve, can see it. We can achieve it. So that's the space I'm at right now. Oh, my gosh. I wish you could see me grinning, smiling, because when you were saying um, about the life force and she, sacred sexuality, and I was just, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I wish you could see my face. Yes, and that's what, that's what I kind of admire and love about you, because you, you are in that space of, like me, <clears throat> Of sexuality being a force. That's what I tell all my ladies uh, in the uh, event that I do at my house. It is an energy, and you know, and we need to know how to use it wisely and creatively. It's a creative force energy, um, and so you really hit it on the head. And with your new, you know, website title, sensual charm. Yes, we we have a lot of stuff in common. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Like, uh, like a sisterhood conversation. We're just going to act a fool and pretend we're not even doing this. But that's the best conversation. That is the best conversation. I just, 
I was just like, my cheeks are hurting already because, like, first of all, let's clear the air. So we share the same husband. <laughs> oh, we do. See? Yeah, for free. Yeah, I just have to, every time you post a picture of him, and I'm like, okay, this is just a hit. Just don't know my little, you know, secret crush on this man. <laughs> I'm getting inboxes of women saying, hey, hold up, sister. Listen, I'll share Bruce Lee. It's okay. I know he was loved by millions, both men and women. Um, But Bruce and I, we have a very special divine cosmic connection. He he comes to me and shares data and information with me. Um, So I take him, you know, to heart. (laughs) Well, um, yeah, I can see that. I mean, I've been – I've just posted a – I'm in school right now, and I've just posted one of my favorite quotes about water, um, his quote about water. That really resonated with me. But once in a blue moon, I'll get this urge and crave just to see some of his, like, documentaries and movies and shows. And I was like, okay, now, um, I see we have some other people that uh, really really (laughs) him. But, uh, yeah, I would like to know more about that connection later, if you don't mind. But um, I, I... I really connect with you because you're all about, um, well, for the most part, I know you speak highly on women, femininity, uh, feminine energy, sexuality, sensuality, and that is exactly the journey that I'm starting and going through, and I express that through dance. So I'm Mm -hmm. glad that you're using the word sensual because people get to get mixed up with the word sensual and sexuality, and I want to hear your take on sexuality and sensuality when it comes from a woman's perspective, from, like, how it is for a woman, because men, bless their hearts, they're lovely. Um, but they tend to, and when it come in, they tend to mix up those words together. So what are your views on it? Like, I'm just... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, even women, I think, get a little bit um, confused or not really understanding what sensuality is. And really, it is... Um, having our senses, being fully present with our senses, the ability to sense. <laughs> so, you know, um, we have our major senses and then we have our multi-sensory abilities. So um, as we engage life, are we taking in the moment with all of our senses? Are we smelling and are we um, touching? Are we, you know, hearing, you know, all of these um, tasting um, seeing, and then we have our multi-sensory abilities where we can actually use our intuition, mm-hmm. um, clairvoyance, and all those other wonderful um, multi-sensory abilities. So that is what sensuality is. Um, sexuality is dealing with the sexual organs, is dealing with the act of intercourse or the moving of sexual energy, which is your life force energy. So anything having to do with sex. Um, it's an energy, um, as well as sensuality, but it's very different, obviously. So you can be eating an apple, right? You can just, like, open your mouth and just, you know, bite down an apple and just, you know, while you're working on the computer, you're surfing the net or whatever you're doing, and you're not even feeling the skin of the apple on your lips or the taste of the meat of the apple on your tongue or the scent of the apple that you're actually engaging, or the feeling sensations of the apple when, as your fingers are touching and communicating with the apple. You know, are we even in the moment? That is a mm-hmm. sensual moment, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and that is what sensual charm is about, is about really fully sensing life. Ooh. It's sensing life. And um, with everything and that is removing the layers of programming and um fear and all of the data that we've collected over time as to what we think this this reality is about Mm -hmm. and sensing something completely different something completely welcome back i guess uh that was kind of too much (laughs) but um Nothing is too much in my world, but we're back. This is part two. Um, since we got cut off, um, 
Spirit's phone die. That really like happens all the time with me. <laughs> so I'm used to it. So welcome back, Spirit, and continue because I was all in it. So um, we're just talking about the difference between sensuality and sexuality. And um, I was just talking about the apple and the sensing. So that is where I'm moving with with my my life, my business, the central charm, the aspect of really using the senses and multi sensory abilities to really create a new reality, to create a new world, um, personally and then collectively with those of like minds. So that's to me is the ultimate um not ultimate, but it was damn near close to being <laughs> an ultimate um creatress. Is, is an alchemist is using the imagination and multi sensory abilities to create to create what we want in our lives. Mm, that I mean, I think I'm gonna uh, take your description of sensual and sexuality because um, it is our senses, yes, and in anything that you do. And it's funny you mentioned food because that's how I am when I I like to create and make foods. Um, and I, I like to really be in touch and embody my food to the point like, well, I'm making love to my food. And I've used those words before. Like, I must make love to the salad. <laughs> so, well, that is so interesting you said that because I moan. And even my friend's like, yeah, you do moan when you're eating. You haven't noticed? I'm like, I'm so lost in it that I don't even pay attention. But um, that that is so on point. And I think people have lost that, uh, especially for women. They have lost that part of them, you know. It's just like they're not in touch with themselves. So how can they, you know, let alone be sexual, you know? So that's a powerful explanation. I appreciate that. That's yeah, that's going in my little journal tonight. <laughs> well, it's interesting because I'm actually doing this uh, one of my blogs, um, the public displays of pleasure. So in our society, it's kind of frowned down upon even this like sex driven mm -hmm. society you know it's shied upon for a woman to express pleasure mm. openly without having it be sexual mm -hmm. like like you said if you're enjoying a nice cake and you're moaning until you're diving into this nice triple chocolate cake or whatever cake you like cheesecake and you actually moan or just take in the pleasure or you know, it's sexual. It is a sexual, it's a sensual experience, but people can perceive that to be that you're flirting or you're being sexual or you're trying to, you know, or if a woman is getting her pedicure done and her feet massage and she begins to moan or, you know, really show public display, uh, display of pleasure is frowned upon. So most women would keep that in check. You know, they would keep that part of themselves in check because they don't want to be little bad little girls and, you know, moan in public, you know. Because my mother would have snatched me up real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my mother would have slapped me, snatched me up. If I would ever do something like that, you know. But in public. Now, at home, you're eating your ice cream cone. You're into it. No one cares. When you're out in public, you don't, do, <laughs> you don't eat the ice cream cone the same way you do at home, right? Wow, then I'm breaking all the rules because I lose uh, my sense of surroundings when I'm in my element. It's like, you know, my friends have to kind of like, they keep me kind of in check or grounded or whatever. But I feel like you're right. We we are taught that. Like, where, where does it start to where, you know, we are told we can be sensual, we can be sexual when it's a part of us, you know? That's like the, the most beautiful thing, the most like amazing gifts that we have, you know, and it starts within. And I think you're doing wonderful work in helping women um, do that. And I try to do it through movement. Um, I know everybody has their different venues, and I figured, you know, movement, the body. The body is its own language, and that's where I start, you know, just like, hey, like, touch your fingers. Like, how does it feel? Like, something so simple like that. And moving on to bigger things, you know, so... Wow, that's amazing work. You know, mm -hmm. you know? the fun. Yes, and, and and dance. I mean, really, I love like I love the art of dance and 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 movement. Mm -hmm. And um, you can't get any better than you know feeling the body and expressing through the body. So it's it's the only vehicle we have. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah. So that's like I I I call dancers, you know, the real quantum physicists. You know, because oh, they're taking data through the body and expressing it, like right now. Oh, um, gosh. You should, you should see me as you're talking. I'm like all over the place. <laughs> you just don't know. I'm just. I can't sit still. I'm standing up as you're talking. Like, your energy and the way you describe things and the way you come about, it's like you were just saying, it's like, my body is encoding everything that you're saying. It's like, it's, it, I, I don't know, I look like a circus act. <laughs> awesome. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, you, you have a wonderful gift, and I can't wait for you to launch. It's sensual charm. I love that catchy, very... Oh, non-threatening, because I know some, some folks, when they see, like, sex or sexuality, it's like or erotica or anything that's even remotely close to sex. It's like, you know, they're very tippy-toey about it. But this is, this is embodying more than that. And I, I'm just, like, eager. I'm going to be one of the ones and be like, now, Spirit, where's the website? Come on. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's going to launch for the next seven days. So it's been... A journey for me. This I have been like overdue in one way, but in in a sacred way, all things unfold in time. It has been a journey for me, and um, I'm really excited about about this uh, project. And um, and um, I found through this whole expression of sexuality and and having I feel deep insights about myself. um, I was able to support my clients. Um, with really having this deep connection with their own um, selves in a different, unique way that I wasn't taught by my mama, mm-hmm. you know. Um, <laughs> <Me either. laughs> and I think the power of this work that I'm doing, that we all are doing, is that I think we know is imperative that we really begin to archive and share and express mm-hmm. um, this information as best as we can. Um, and it's just not about getting in the head, but it's really a heart, mind, yoni, trinity connection. <laughs> um, or for a man, heart, mind, and lingam connection, um, where we are, we can be sensual together and really, um, you know, have really ignite something new in our engagements and relationships. I think we're into the point now, I had an article by Jennifer, one of my my friends on Facebook, she sent me an article, an article about tendering and how dating is so clinical. Mm-hmm. Now, um, these apps are just going through women and men just hooking up, hooking up. And I think we become desensitized. Oh. Um, and uh, I think when we have that duality, you know, when we have a culture that's becoming more um, clinical, more, you know, it's less human, the need for human contact will become stronger as we begin to move into it. So I'm, I'm sensing, even from men who will inbox me, saying, you know what? I don't want to be a sexual object. I want to mean something to a woman. I'm like, wow, this is, oh, is wow. kind of new. <laughs> you know, men are even asking for something richer. So we'll have these parallels in our reality where we have the clinical, you know, aspect of it and people will go for that people will thrive in that and then you have the complete opposite where people are looking for something different it's really about how what we're focusing on Mm -hmm. and be clear about what we want and just only focus on what we want versus pointing at them and judging them um and trying to save someone else's you know life it's really about just focusing on what we want to create for ourselves Ooh, i'm gonna give you a snap Thank you. Uh, uh, I have no words. So when I snap, that's just okay. <laughs> that's what I'm going to be doing from now on. No, uh, we uh, here we go. Another similarity. I love that you throw out questions out there, like questions that people may be thinking or not thinking. You um, seek out people's curiosity, their thoughts, and, you, and very collaborative. You share what's on your mind and you bring up like ideas and thoughts and questions that like, you know, people wouldn't even think about, you know, and I, and I love that, you know, you explore, you know, you're constantly an explorer of people's inner world. And I just, I just, whenever I read it, you know, some of your posts on Facebook and what have you, I'm like, Oh, I didn't think of that. 
oh, okay, well, now I'm going to think about it. You know, it's the sharing, the passion you have to share and to put it out there. And it could be <laughs> something so silly but powerful. Like, I like that you have a this humor that is unbelievable. Thank <laughs> you. You gotta laugh at you. You know, you, you gotta have you gotta have the humor. You you know, you're not gonna do well, but you have to have a sense of humor. And I don't take myself seriously, you know, as seriously as some other people uh, want me to take myself. I remember doing an interview years ago. I don't even remember the topic, but I was doing a I was um, uh, interviewing uh, with someone, and this brother uh, sent this long email about me not being cultural. I was silly. I was laughing in the back. And you know, at this long dissertation about me not being strong enough for the for the radio interviewing position, I'm like, hold up, brother. I mean, you know what? Have a laugh. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm a little goofy, but that we all have our glitches, right? I think those these glitches makes us, you know, relatable. Um, and there's sometimes I remember doing an interview where I had to literally. <laughs> It was on sacred sexuality. This is like maybe two, eight to ten years ago, and and I wanted to laugh, and I was laughing, and and my guest was actually kept talking, but I I had lost control, and uh, obviously in radio you can't tell what's going on, right? Mm-hmm. And so then he said hello. <laughs> I just couldn't stop laughing. I couldn't get back on the air. But that's my glitch because I think I can go very deep in my thinking. Mm -hmm. Um, I can go very deep, you know, so far as my concepts. It'll stretch me out. And I think, you know, just being um, a little goofy, a little silly, and also being um, not able to see simple things, Mm -hmm. these are the way I think I'm balanced. Because I can understand very abstract, very complex things, but sometimes the most simplest things was what is this? Everybody's like, you know what this is, don't you? Like, no, I don't. I don't see it. You see, so I think that's just the cosmic jokes the creator play on us to balance us out. Yes, I totally agree. I, that, the fact that you don't take yourself seriously, and you know, and it, it, it's funny because for some people, I don't know if this you've experienced this because I am like a joker at heart. Like I've never taken myself seriously. Like it's just ridiculous. Like I laugh for no reason, you know. Like I laugh when my friends call. I have one friend that he's like, yeah, when I call you, before you even say a word, you're laughing. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's my hello. But I like that you don't take yourself seriously and that you know humor is a beautiful thing. Like it just—it's a great way to convey messages. You know what I mean? I mean, look yeah. at some of the comedians, you know, that are still in the truth, and yet you're laughing at it, but you're like, wait, okay, you know. So I—I I, I like that—that you're—you're you, and you're unapologetically you. That's—that's that's what I value and admire. Um, and that you share information. You know, you're a collaborator. You know, so that's. Yes, there's like a thousand five hundred things in my head. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to read one quote. Okay. Um, I want to read something that you posted uh, Ooh, on really nice. book. <laughs> yes, that <laughs> has to do with men and women. Oh, uh, great! Just the ones that I, you know, that stood out with me. And, okay, and great. That's very on point with what we were talking about. The first one is about women, women who are bitter. Mm-hmm. You said. Yes, there are a lot of women who are bitter, disappointed, Mm. and fearful of trusting themselves to love again. Yes. We must remember that we have the power of choice Mm. to allow the flow of life to enhance our self-awareness. Allow the bitterness to make us beautiful. Whoa. Thank you. Yes. Take it away. Um, (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm a single mom. Um. I think I was maybe, uh, I think I was maybe, maybe 23, 24. I was on the phone with my cousin and I was, he's like two years older than me or three, but he thinks he's like 50 years older than me. (laughs) And, um, he was like, wow, you know, you're kind of, you know, he said, you're, he said, he either caught me bitter or made a comment about bitterness. Cause I was just like, you know, I'm raising a son by myself with no financial, emotional, mental, physical support. Um, 
and he was like, you know, he he made a comment that just totally resonated with me. And um, it was alluding to the fact that, you know, you don't have to be bitter. Bitter was a choice. So, you know, I was seeing myself um, kind of unraveling um, throughout the years of um, just reacting to um, other people and um, playing this character of, you know, the typical bitter woman, you know, and we have to blame everyone and everyone for our lives, our decisions. And, um, and it's really, in my not so humble opinion, and I'm really speaking to myself here, childlike, you know, mm-hmm. um, and as I'm really expanding, my intention is to expand and to grow in this lifetime. I had to look at myself and the choices I was making, and I realized the bitterness was a choice. So I allowed the bitterness, the bitter experiences to make me beautiful. Number one is that I realized that I have the power to choose mm. and that I can stand on principles to make my choices, right? And I can stand on something, um, and I can stand on you know, and I didn't have any set of principles at the time. You know, I'm in my 20s, you know. I didn't have any code of nothing. I was just, like, moving. <laughs> like, we all do, just kind of move through. Hopefully, we don't get burned. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, we don't get, you know, whatever it is. So, I was getting this information just by being available, just being open to it. So, oh, oh, my God, I can create some principles for myself. I can choose. I can look for quality men. I can learn from these experiences. So learning from relationships was was born in my 20s. Mm. And so I realized that my smile was so much prettier than a frown. And I realized it was magnetizing. I mean, it, I walk into a room and my smile, my energy, men would kind of react to that. So I was like, oh, what? <laughs> oh, 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 right? And so, uh, <laughs> and so I have men call you me radiant. I'm like, wow, this is interesting. You know, I was getting, you know, feedback uh, from my, from my uh, world here, from the men, the masculine in my space. And they all received me very well with, you know, with my smile and with my radiance. So I realized, you know, bitterness um, can be an actual a fuel to make you more radiant inside, more confident, more loving. And it's our fear to think that someone can hurt us that, that makes us feel bitter in the first place. You know, so again, it's taking a step back for me and realizing, don't take yourself so seriously. Mm. You know, if this is the one life that you have being Spirit Halima, being you being being who you are then get your heart broke as many times as you can (laughs) go for it Mm. live on that edge you know don't feel like anyone has the power to hurt you because they do not um and 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 being hurt is an agreement by the way which i choose to really not agree to (laughs) i don't do that agreement i choose to enjoy to experiment and to experience myself and you are a character in my space and I love you for showing up in my space to reflect back to me fragments of my thinking that I can now go into the lab of self and make corrections so I can come back and have new experiences more evolved experiences but I love you and I thank you for showing up so when you get to these different gears of these experiences that we're having, ultimately you're going to hit this love button, a deep, profound love for yourself and a deep, profound love for all of those, quote, unquote, men or women, whoever you're talking to, who have, quote, unquote, hurt you. You'll see the love that's there. Mm -hmm. I know I have words, but that's, that's, that's what's coming through. Oh, my gosh. Choice. Yes. I was just talking about that the other day. There's a choice and a powerful statement you made, like, get hurt is an agreement. Wow. That's, I've not, like, heard it said it in that way. It is an agreement. Mm -hmm. And choosing to give people your power, that's an agreement. Like, that's a choice, too. Choice, too. Yeah, and people get so fearful of love. And I've heard it in another uh, way expressed, you know, simply put, like, 
just love, just open up, experience, go through the journey. And that's, we need to hear more of that. You know? Yes. I mean, and I purposely intentionally put myself in situations um, that I knew I would grow the most and wouldn't be very comfortable, but I was going to get a definitely ref- um, return on investment so far as my <laughs> my energy. And so I, <laughs> I we have that, that playfulness. That's a playfulness. You know, again, it's playful. And, um, and if you know it's an agreement, then what are you afraid of? Mm. If you know if it's an agreement, then what, what are you afraid of? Mm. You know, so... Ooh. Oh, there you go. That's that later. I think that's gonna that that woman repeat this past five minutes that you just heard over and over and over again. <laughs> that's what well, I'm, to I'm going to be doing. I'm doing a, a two hour webinar on create a delicious lover. Oh, you gotta give me that information so I can post it all under this <laughs> link. Thank you. I, I'm gosh. Well, yeah. It's going to be in September. And I really, like, I'm so, so passionate about really giving, supporting myself as I evolve and other women so we can end this autopilot, reactionary, programmed ways of relating and really retrieve our power back. It was like we stuck on a loop. We don't even know what we're doing or why we're doing it. We just know that we may have seen our mama do it, our aunt do it, our girlfriends do it, mm-hmm. bad girls show doing it there. <laughs> no. I'll just say this. When you realize that 99.999% and I damn near should say 100% of the women, the roles of women on, te- on television mm-hmm. are not representing very mature Amen. women. Ooh. They're only going to project images of women that is suitable and palatable mm. for the masculine male centered paradigm because the, the fearless woman who's embodied, truly embodied in her feminine essence is not going to be palatable to the male puppeteers in the media. Mm. It's not. And when you realize that, you'll understand why. I had to understand why men reacted to me a certain way on Facebook or wherever. They wanted to challenge me and and and, and say hurtful things yeah. to me. And I, and I had to realize, you know, that's not the true essence of them. That is their corresponding oh. um, programming to an old para- to an old programming I had. So, so what I'm saying is that. When we evolved, you're going to trigger the men in your space who are not at that same frequency because they want things to be as they once were. And when you're no longer that, when you're not really, you're not longer reacting the way this collective female body is programmed to act, then they go awry. I had a male friend tell me this really close friend, a guy actually I'm seeing right now. <laughs> and he's, oh, him, right? And he said to me, he said, men who can't control you, they know that they can't control you, so you make them go into their feelings. Mm. See, because you're not a certain way, they don't know how to adjust to you, so they're going to get deep in their feelings and question themselves because they can't do X, Y, and Z like they can some other women. And what I'm saying, that's the greatest power that we have as women is to know that we don't have to react mm. unconsciously to stimulus that we've we you know we've been a, a programmed to and we've been accustomed to um like again being hurt or, or not trusting or you know calling men dogs or mm. you know expecting men to be this these are all reactionary um thoughts and behaviors but when we can step aside with a fresh new way of looking at ourselves and a fresh new way of honing this, ama- harnessing this amazing power we have mm-hmm. called the feminine essence, then we'll see things very differently. Oh, yes. Speaking to experiences I went through and something that every woman can relate, you know, this need to control, which 
you know, follows really well to another quote that I put down here that really resonated with me, having to do us being in relations with men and how we see our counterparts, our complements in a way. Um, and that that is so true, what you just said about when they feel like they can't control you, you allow them to tap into that other essence of them. And that's, you know, I, I'm, I've experienced that, currently experiencing it. So mm-hmm. it's, it's very on point. And that is so true in the media. Yeah. It's like they, they don't know for women like us and the women out there that are listening that can relate to Spirit and I. Yeah. They don't know how to react to, to, to us in a way. So they, they escort to like, you know, like you said, the insults and everything because it's like, whoa. <laughs> 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 like, how do I crack her code? And then, you know, they, then they know at their current mindset, they don't have, they don't have the key. You see, so and then they become very insecure. Like, um, like, for example, Scandal, you have um, the main character, I'm not sure her name, I think it was something Pope, but now you have this powerful woman, quote unquote, right? Now she's running her own business. You know, she's managing, taking care of business, but her emotional body is just like, <laughs> what? You know, her emotionality is what men uh, like, you know? This uncertainty, this unwavering, um, all of that is, is an emotional body that's very congruent with how they want us to be, respond, and act. You know, and so I know the character is very pop- popular, but you begin to decode behaviors, you'll see something very different, um, very consistent with the patterns that is very, you know, very palatable for the male-centered paradigm. I mean, and there's a whole bunch of them. Um, that we see that we may have some relate we may relate to them on some level but on a on a deeper level as you peer through all this you begin to see this is how they want women to react sexually this is how they want women to react Mm. to men to male uh powerful quote-unquote positions to be um to not be solid, to be led by their emotions, not using really using their logic, not being integrated, you know, um, not being willing to burn it all down if it's not supporting and serving them, mm-hmm. you know. So it's it's interesting to see the images that they actually front out in front out in front of us. And you know what? what? We, that's, mm-hmm. that's so true because I only heard of Scandal. I don't have cable or anything, but I've never watched one episode. I've just kind of word of mouth heard it from my friends. And now I see the fascination with that character and that show, for that matter, by the way you just explained it. And it reminds me of a movie that's coming up with Sanat Lathan, Perfect Stranger. Mm. I mean, I'm going to go watch that for, you know, and write a blog on it. Like, I'm going to see, like, okay, because it's, it, I don't know. It, it, like, it, it triggers something in me to be like, okay, like you just said the images that we see is not really representative. It's, it's, it's satisfying, you know, you typical males out there and it's not how, you know, someone reacts. So that movie came into my mind and also the movie 50 shades of gray, uh, with how the, the girl, the character started responding to him and how he in a way started to change. Mm-hmm. He got in touch with his emotion, which he didn't want to. So, Everything that you're saying here, like it's it's you're seeing it in the media, but you but you know you have people that are not really because I analyze movies, I just don't watch it for pleasure. <laughs> we said there is just being you know a a a part of it to be downloaded into. You have to use, you got to be critical. You have to yes. have intention when you're watching these images because you know there's a lot of information that that you can see that can be supportive of yourself. You can know if you know what you're looking at, but if you don't, then it's for not. Yeah, it is. It is. And okay, this is my last quote that was so powerful, and it's right in right in top line with what we were just saying about men. Um, so it says, "In my own evolution, so speaking about you, your journey, the need to manipulate and control a man to demand this and that was transformed in realizing that I desire to be moved by inspiration and not obligation." Mm. Pause on that one. Um, I desire that a man feel inspired to be in my presence and yeah. do say what is authentic to his heart. Mm. 
<laughs> if he is not inspired, then he is simply not the one. And then you put in parentheses, which I love, two, three, or four. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> thank I, you, thank you. That whole concoction of what you just said, to be inspired to be moved by my inspiration and not obligation I mean just that alone like wow you should do a course on men too on <laughs> men to, to realize this because I think you, you're you right we have we have power but it's not power at the expense of uh, of the men and that's what most men don't understand and that's what most women you know miscommunicate to their men or have it wrong because I have a friend who says well I'll always believe I'm more powerful than a man I was like well okay well then that just explains your current relationship um mm-hmm. you can't it, it's not because she's like well then we'll never get along because <laughs> you know something like that she was joking because I, I said something about balance and yin yang and all the stuff she's like well no I've always thought I was better than a man I've always been part of a man I was like well okay darling um but uh, uh, yeah how do you like uh, address that and then I got one more thing because I know Tommy's of the essence (laughs) (laughs) um let's see how did I come up with that thought that I shared yes wow um let's see how did I come up with that thought um again through my own experiences I realized that you know We, as women, we have these set of expectations, Mm. right? And so we attempt to manipulate, control um, men so they can make us, quote, unquote, happy. And we have to have a really serious conversation as to why, why are we allowing external things, men in particular, Mm. to define when we're happy. We can do that independent of our external world so we have made men prisoners of our own happiness so if he acts quote unquote acts up then we're not happy and we have to find ways to keep him doing what we want him to do for for him to make us happy and this is a lot of control a lot of mess going on there and it'll never work Mm -hmm. um because the quest here is for your own freedom and i think that's what women are learning and that's one of my blogs are going to be about um (laughs) Vibe is going to be about the beauty of cheating. Um, mm. <laughs> ah. And I know that may, that may rub some women the wrong way. I love but, it. But, <laughs> but, you know, I'm always going to bring you to homeostasis. I'm going to, you know, I'm going <laughs> to, we do some, we do some surgery, but I'll bring you back, bring you back. Um, so, yeah. So, I realized that I had no, um, control over anyone but myself and when I really own that then why I do I expect someone to do these things for me oh you have to take me to this restaurant and you have to you know do this for me and spend this kind of money on me and take me to certain places or you know you have to never look at another woman because I'm gonna feel secure and I, you know really it's like childlike behavior like, what are we really saying? What are we really communicating to our men when we act that way? We must take a different. We must take a step back and put a, a, a magnifying glass on our behavior. So I didn't want to be that woman because emotionally, I'm not going to make any man responsible for my happiness, for my well-being. He can't be it, mm. and I'm going to take you off the hook. Now, if you want, if you're inspired to, um move in my direction and you're eager to converse with me to be in my company to laugh play with me that's beautiful you know um but i would never expect a man or hold him to any obligation where he was not congruent in his own mind body and soul only out of a piece of paper that says hey this is what we're supposed to be doing right now (laughs) call a legal document Mm-hmm. Or because he's so afraid of being himself, he he really wants to go out there and, and be different. But I'm doing this for you, you know. Like I want to be this for you because I know that your world is dependent upon me. What is this? Is full as craziness, craziness. So I desire freedom, and I think that the free the beauty of cheating 
and um, I'm going to give a little bit here, is that women have been cheating ourselves and betraying ourselves for uh, centuries. You know, how many women do you know who have been married, who had dreams, but deferred her dreams to be married, to take on a lifestyle with a man, mm-hmm. um, and gave her poor dreams, and then she got married, babies, you know, 20 years later, he's leaving her for a younger woman, and she's bitter, mm-hmm. because I, I, I sacrificed all this time, but here's the thing, Why? I think this whole cheating the idea of men betraying women is to reflect back to us that we have deeply betrayed ourselves. We're disconnected from the very source of our of ourselves, the source of life. And we may not want to admit this. We may not want to admit this, and it's, it's challenging. <laughs> but I dare near say that many women have replaced man over God in their pursuit or creator. We want a man more than we want to be connected connected to the very source that breathes air through our bodies, that pumps our heart, that that, that does a trillion trillion um, functions every moment, every second of our existence. That we rather move that move that alignment with that energy, that intelligence, mm. to have a man, and that is the ultimate betrayal of yourself. And men are always going to reflect back that to us as long as that is the case when we rededicate ourselves to ourselves to connecting with the very source of life to connect with that which the power that (laughs) makes worlds is at our fingertips but we will sacrifice that to be a wife or to be someone's woman to be um accepted or validated by society so you can say oh i'm good oh yeah hey he wants me you know how many of us are in relationships simply because we don't want to be alone or how many of us are in relationships simply because we know that being single is looked upon as a disease and we want to say hey i'm disease free (laughs) how many how many of us have these men who i'm sorry males who we don't even have the respect for. We don't even respect ourselves, but we keep him around because he has a, a lingam. Mm. He may not know how to use it, but he has it nonetheless. How many of us are cheating ourselves every moment? How many of us lose integrity with ourselves and respect? I know I did. I know I was married to a man that I lost respect for. And more importantly, I had lost respect for m- myself. That is the deepest betrayal of yourself. When you lose respect for being in a relationship with a man you don't respect. Mm. If you have to find a way to mend that or leave, you know. Um, So I'm speaking from experience. And these are the tough questions that I think our sister circles should be really entertaining with a light heart. You know, really examining some of these beliefs that we have. And I'm not anti-marriage, and I'm not, of course, I'm not anti I love me. I'm a heterosexual woman, healthy woman. Um, but the more I understand about sexuality and the nature of reality, um, the less um, reactive I am, mm-hmm. you know, the less reactive I am. And I do inquire, I do look at my own behavior, I see my sister's behavior, collecting my my mom, I'm looking around to see what's what's in my world, why are we moving and acting with this particular mindset, and I think that when I see women trying to be a man's mother, you don't respect him as a man, and uh, we have to get really clear about that, I have a friend. He's my best friend and the best man that I know. And he really came into my life and elevated my, he elevated my um, view of men completely. And here are some basics that I know some of us just don't know about because it hasn't been modeled for us, not in the home or anywhere else. But this is what my friend has done for me. He's always kept his word to me. He has, he has always kept his word to me mm-hmm. without question. If there's something he cannot do, he will let me know and renegotiate with me because he cares about his word. Mm. 
So, for example, if he said, okay, I'm going to be there at 8.30, and if he knows he's in traffic, oh, I'm running a little bit late, give me ETA 10, 10 more minutes. He's on it. Okay. Um, he's, he's in the trenches with me. He wants to know about my life. He's, if I say, you know what, my, I was at work one day, and I had some irritant in my eye. I kept, you know, eyes are itchy, watery. He was like, he, he lives way across town. That's not a man I'm sleeping with, by the way. He he lives way across town. He says, "Let me come bring you something, some eye drops, just simple stuff like that." He's always looking for a way to serve me. My website, my business. He'll send me. He'll sit, sit down with me. He'll go over my work with me. Go over my writing with me. He'll any way he can serve me. He is. He has made it that he is that man. Mm. And I didn't have that from my father. I didn't have it from my husband. Mm. I didn't have it from the men in my life. But he has come in such a brilliant and luminescent way to show me a really beautiful example of the masculine. Um, and I think we need more of that. And how, and how we get it is by working on ourselves. He's like my, he's like my gift from the cosmos. Like, he's my graduation gift. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ooh. Ooh. I, I think I've just like, graduated myself with this information. I am a spirit of Halima University. Hey, I'm walking. I'm walking across that stage. You have been, I am so serious. Like, you have given a wealth of information. Every woman, any woman needs to listen to this because you've said so much. You just don't even know. Like, I'm going to be playing back. I'm going to play back this for my women's group. Like, there's so much information here that women need to, and men need to know. You know what I mean? And this will be, like, a great thing for the adolescent youth to, the adolescent females, which I'm passionate about, to hear, too. You know? Because it starts with ourselves, like you said, the inner, our inner world and how we, how we choose to be with ourselves and then with someone else, you know, how we're going to respond, you know, being proactive instead of responsive, like you said, and getting in touch with our body, you know, by any means that you feel comfortable with getting in touch with yourself, you know, because relationships are all reflections about ourselves. And, and when you mentioned beauty, the beauty of cheating, my mind automatically went to like, okay, well, if you have a situation where you've been cheated on, it's a great opportunity to reflect and not necessarily say, what did I do uh, or what I didn't do, but just like, hey, pause, time out, like what's going on, you know, <laughs> and learning to go from there, like what the deal, like, whoa, you know, yeah, like, 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 why, like, why would I question myself? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> we question, <laughs> why do we question, my... why do we feel as if they were not enough because exactly. a man put his penis in another one another woman's yoni. Like why do we think that? Mm-hmm. Why do we tell not other women there. um or a man will say this too? Uh, obviously she couldn't keep him happy. Mm-hmm. Or it's my this is my favorite one that we do is sister just breaks a sisterhood. Well, you know, would you do, won't do another another oh. woman would, Well, here's my thing. Mm. If another woman wants to and if he's open for it then she needs to and that's how i'm looking mm. at it because i'm not competing with another woman for nothing mm. another woman is not my competition she is my sister whether she knows it or not mm. she is not she is she is uh, my sister she may have lost that you know mindset right now but she'll get it on the next time because guess what what well, he'll do with you, he'll do to you. And as the sisterhood is so disenfranchised right now, because we're, again, putting what I say, we don't want to say, we want a man more than we want connection with the source of life. Ooh. And when we, when we break the sister circle, which is the most powerful power on this planet, is sisterhood. Mm-hmm. That, is a, that is one of the most powerful forces, powerful forces on the planet is sisterhood. Mm-hmm. And when they have, when they have successfully, you know, diminished that force, and we have participated, we all have participated in this. Mm. You, we support a weak male-centered paradigm. Mm. But the beauty of it is that we can connect. So whatever you feel you're doing to my husband is a, is a, is or my lover, if you supporting him breaking his agreement, you're keeping him a boy. He can never be a man for you if he's a boy with me. 
why don't you grow him up and say, hey, I know you have a girlfriend. Is she open to what you're doing? Let me have a conversation with her. That's a grown woman conversation. That's going to make him, that's going to grow him to be a man. He's going to have to not evolve himself to be honest about his feelings. But if you allow him to spend a few dollars on you and get a hotel room and wash off and come home to his family, then you have kept him a boy. Mm. Ooh, ooh, that's a whole nother show. That's a whole nother show, girl. I'm not even going to go there right now. Cause I, I think I've got my bachelor's now. I thought I, I thought I was at the high school level. This is like, I'm Amy. Yeah, my master's now. No, oh my gosh, this information. Wow, wow. Yes, you're you're not going anywhere. Like, I... I just said to my other guests, like, once you, once I got you, you're in. Like, <laughs> we're not through, we're not through. And I'm definitely not through with you because everything that you're saying is just confirmation of what I'm starting to do, that sisterhood and, 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 and inspiring women and motivating women to get in touch with themselves and to, to get at the core of their passion and desire, which they have lost. So, and I do that through movement, you know, and that's the only way that I kind of know right now. Um, but I'm pre- there's like more other things, you know, it's like the sky's the limit. And I, I think you're just going to like, oh, my gosh, be an impact, a force of nature <laughs> to help yeah. out this woman. Um, and, and you got my husband there helping you out. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got my cosmic hubby, boy. He's telling me he is so supportive of this this process. He He is. He 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 is. He is. He knows how beautiful he is um, from a soul perspective, and um, I will be sharing <laughs> my love, <laughs> oh, my love affair with uh, Bruce Lee to that man. <laughs> All right, I digress. So, yes. Oh my gosh, we are gonna stop there. Not quite yet, because I have a fun game that I like to play at the end. Uh, okay. It's like a what's it called? A uh, uh, I can't think of the name right now, but it's when I say something and whatever comes into your mind, you know what it is. <laughs> yes, yes, let's do it. <laughs> and, and then we'll close with all your information and any lasting words you would like to say. So here we go. Uh, since we're on the topic, relationships. Love. Mm, sex. Love. Sensuality. Mm, peace. What brings you great freedom? Knowing that I'm connected to something greater than my physical self. Mm. Favorite fruit? Berries. Any kind of berry. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Any any kind of berry you would do. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Beach or the lake? Serenity. Mm. If you can give the world one thing, what would it be? Mm. awareness that they are too connected to something greater than themselves Mm, 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 mm. yes oh my gosh it's been my favorite word to use with everything that's beyond is this has been orgasmically divine that is what is written that's what i say everything or anything that has touched me like our conversation i mean it's you would have been cracking up watching me visually because I've just been in motion like throughout this conversation just because of your words and how it's touching me and how it's confirming everything. I look like a clown. So <laughs> I'm glad that we weren't visual so it wouldn't be distracting to people. I love, I love, I love radio and I love doing these, these um, audios because you can't really see what's going on and there's so much behind the scenes. You can have a video of the, of the behind the scenes. And, I, love uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So beloved, tell them where they can find you. I know I'm going to put a bunch of, of your information on the bottom of the link. But shout out, plug in, time, like tell them how they can connect with you, what they should expect from you, all that good stuff. Okay, great. So I'm launching my new website. It's called Sensual Charm. That's S-E-N-S-U-A-L, charm, C-H-A-R-M dot com. Be looking for that to be launched within the next seven days. Um, You can email me at spirithalima at yahoo dot com. That's spirit. H-A-L-I-M-A at yahoo.com. 
um, I do a lot of work with women with sexual fitness, sexual energy. Um, and also for me, it's always important to go to the brain, the mind. So it's all integrated, it's all holistic. Um, we want to be sexually fit. And most importantly, we want to be more aligned with our true essence. And that is my, that is my purpose. That's my passion. So, um, again, centralcharm.com. You can email me, um, what to expect. Expect something completely different than what you think it's going to be. Just have no expectations at all and let the experience unfold for you perfectly as it will. Oh my gosh. Yes. Y'all heard her. Y'all better go and check her out because she's on some other, like we say, ish. And I'm just loving it because it's like, you know, what I'm doing, what you do, it's a great combination. And I can't wait to, for you to launch your website because I'm going to be in touch. And feel free to come back on here and, you know, promote it and talk all about it. So it's been bliss. <laughs> it has. It's been very pleasant to my being. And thank you so much for the invitation. This has been, I, I'm not going to use your word orgasm, but I will say it's been, it's been very juicy. <laughs> Right back at ya, right back at ya. So grateful for connecting with us. And like I said, we will be in touch. This is Yana with Discover Yourself. And we had Spirit Halima. Woo, that's all I have to say. <laughs> See y'all next time.